Yes, and uh, in the courtship phase, the two animals negotiate the terms and conditions that will eventually lead to copulation. And there's three reasons why a female would agree to having sex. The first reason is the primary reason, which is reproduction. The second reason is that in the animal kingdom, females actually enjoy sex. <laughs> and the, the third reason... <laughs> <laughs> the third reason is that females would agree to having sex in exchange for something that is of value to them. And the scientific term for this behavior is prostitution. <laughs> and we can find out a lot more about animal prostitution with another round of Spot the Perfect. Are we all ready to play another round of Spot the Perfect? <laughs> We have the hummingbird, the hummingbird, the giraffe, the penguin, and the long-tailed macaque. And we know it's about prostitution, so it's your job to tell me which of these animals does not engage in prostitution. Penguin. You think it's the penguin? Why would you say the penguin? They're actually made for life. They're made for life. Yes. And it's a mystery to science because they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> The penguins were actually one of the first species where we have discovered prostitution. Uh, what it is, that you can see it on the picture maybe, uh, it's stones. They need stones to build the nest for the young. But stones are very hard to come by in icy Antarctica. So the females, lazy, have discovered <laughs> quite a while ago that it's a lot easier to take a rock from a pile collected by a male in exchange for a little favor. Ria, do that again. <laughs> Please, just one more time. It'll come. <laughs> what, what, what Before you. <laughs> the hairy thing will come. Yes, um, and, and, and some of these... <laughs> and, and, and some of these luxury birds are so good at this uh, that they get away with ten rocks for one appointment in this <laughs> coldest profession on earth. <laughs> so it's not the penguin. Anyone else want to have a guess? Giraffe. You think it's a giraffe? Who was that, sir? Said the giraffe. Somewhere in the back. Okay. Why would you say it's a giraffe, sir? Uh, I don't know, just one guess. They seem quite tall. <laughs> they seem quite tall. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever been to Brazil? I have. Yeah. Where the prostitutes are all converted. <laughs> tall. <laughs> You're right though, tall I people in general are perverts. What I meant was that the females can get to the branches as well, the trees. So the, the, the female can get to the branches as well, yes. So they don't need to prosecute themselves. Well, it's, it's, you know, a rock isn't really for food. So, um, it, it could be anything, prostitution. But it's the correct answer to give it away. Okay, so it's the giraffe. Way. Sorry. Um, Don't give him too much attention. He spent the show three days in a row now. <laughs> yes, the, the giraffe tries to avoid sex at all cost. So that's why she's the pervert here. But let me tell you about the other horse. The male hummingbird protects the juiciest flowers in his area. And he only grants access to a female in exchange for a little... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Favor. I think they just came. Airmos, William. Airmos. Which, which is a fair swap. Access to a juicy flower in exchange for access to... <laughs> another juicy flower. <laughs> um, but the master prostitutes are the long-tailed macaque. They trade massage for sex. And they've developed that to a level which is incredible. It works like a market economy. The duration of the massage is directly correlated to the duration of the copulation. 
And just like in a market economy, it also has the law of demand and supply. The more females are around, the lower their price will be. <laughs> so it was the correct answer. The giraffe is our pervert because, as I said, she tries to avoid sex. And the male has to chase her for hours and sometimes even days. And even then, she'll put up a fight if she's not in heat. So to save themselves this ordeal, the giraffe has developed the most ingenious of all courtship routines that we know. It's a bit hard to see. The male giraffe nuzzles the anus of the female. That induces the release of liters of urine, of which he will scoop up a good mouthful and then swirl it around, and by taste and smell he can tell whether or not she's sexually receptive. <laughs> And if she's not, he'll find an equally aroused male. Female giraffes are so difficult that 9 out of 10. That's 90% uh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just half an hour, buddy. Thanks. Females are so difficult that 90% of all copulations are male to male. And on that note, I hand you back to Amy. <laughs> uh, but guys, uh, so basically the female giraffe pees on the head of the male giraffe and he can tell from the, from the taste and the smell of her urine whether she's up for it or not. But what happens if she had asparagus for lunch? <laughs> That's the best giraffe asparagus joke I've ever written. Uh, but I did, I wrote, I wrote the joke myself. A lot of comedians don't actually write their own jokes. They have other people to write their jokes for them, which are known as ghost writers. But personally, I don't believe in them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Guys, uh, you got to be careful how you take this advice. you kind of got to read between the lines here. Like, I couldn't just go into a park, stand in front of a load of flowers, wait for a girl to walk by who wanted a flower, and say, I'll give you one if. <laughs> right, I couldn't just pick up a rock, walk over to a girl and go, there you go. <laughs> you wouldn't mind just uh, opening your legs there a little bit. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate, right? It's all about fair exchange. So what we do is we go on dates, you know, so I went on a lunch date and I liked her and I th think she liked me too. So then we went on a second date, but this time I knew I liked her, so I was going to go somewhere good. Somewhere that would impress her, somewhere that she'd remember me by. But I'm Irish, so we're at the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but at least I'll go to something that she'd enjoy, yeah? So we're at Transformers and... <laughs> uh, and you know when you're at the cinema, um, you know when you're at the cinema, what you do is you get like the big meal deal, the big huge popcorn and the massive uh, coke with two straws for like eight or nine thousand pounds. And, <laughs> and you eat the popcorn and of course you give her some too, like yeah, because you know, you want to come across as romantic and, and generous, uh, but not too much because really, it costs a fortune. So, <laughs> and you see popcorn salty girls, so what will happen is it's statistically likely at one stage during that cinema, both of you will need a drink at the same time and you'll be like, Oh my god, we're meant to be together. And that's her, by the way. I don't sound like that. And, and then, like, you know, we're getting on really well, and then there's date three, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but if you read FHM, you will. Date. date. You've obviously read it. Great. Uh, or Cosmo, it's in Cosmo 2. It's basically the third date is the I'm going to have sex with you tonight date. Uh, everyone agree with that? Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you say yeah? William, William, your dad just said yeah. You were conceived on the third date, just so you know. Uh, but I think in general people agree with that. No, I think they do. Alex is looking at me like I'm mad. Third date? Whatever. <laughs> See you later. Bring her to the cinema. <laughs> anyway, so, but by the way, guys, just in case, like, you can't say that to her. You can't go, oh, it's the third date. You know what that means. I'm going to ride you. <laughs> that, like, that's, that's inappropriate too, right? So, but that brings us to, uh, brings us to sex, girls, and uh, sex is copulation, which is the third and final phase. So I'll bring you back to Dr. Doctor. Doctor. Doctor.